So I will just preface this video by saying, again, John Q, you did not have to do me like that. <laughs> but I do thank you. I really sincerely appreciate your words and you allowing me to come on your platform. I really do. So good to know some of us really can work together. We don't have to agree on everything. We don't even have to talk about what we disagree on. We can just talk. And we can spread awareness together. I really hope you guys enjoy this live as much as I did. It was even better the second time around. <laughs> I'll see you in the comments. Doing. I hope well. <laughs> it's been a very busy day. That is for sure. Hope everybody's doing good. Welcome tonight for a special live. Oh, yeah. Aubrey, you are in the house tonight and you are a moderator. Welcome. I just have to make one more adjustment. Okay, made that adjustment. Leslie B. in the house. You are a moderator as well. Miss Nay is in the house. I expect uh, maybe a couple of others moderators tonight. But right now, we are sufficient, as we always are. It's good to see everybody. I've been busy with emails. I've been busy with comments uh, pertaining to the Cash Gurnan case. It's been a phenomenal uh, success uh, for my channel. Uh, next to the Orrin and Orson West case and the... Um, piece that I did for the Micaiah Bryant case as well as my very first case that I began work on which is the Kanika Jenkins case so all those uh, all those videos are doing absolutely excellent since uh, I've started my channel but uh, and that's all that all goes out to you every single one that supports this channel wants John Q to stay and uh, to bring the type of content uh, that you look for, straight, objective, on the table, in your face, and uh, presented in a way to where only you can decide what it is that you see, that you hear, and that you understand when you leave John Q. That is most certainly. I want to say hello to everybody. Mary Jo, Savina, Tanya M, Renaya Rivera, Cats I, Tracy P, Sugar Shacks, M Ray, Mary Martins, welcome back. CJ Jones, welcome. We've got a very, very special live tonight. Wanted to bring Hold on one second. Got to take this call. Hold on one second.
Okay, I had to take that call. I was waiting for that call. And that call was a positive call. It's always good to get a positive call. But now I've got to put my, uh, my phone on mute because we are live. Just Alice, welcome. Mary Gannett's welcome. K. A. Lindsay, welcome. Skeet, welcome. Raul Herrera, welcome. I hope I said that right. <laughs> welcome, everybody. Tonight we're going to be uh, covering some some very powerful information. Uh, there are a lot of uh, cases that are out there that are being worked on, tremendously worked on by certain content creators uh, that I give my hat and my heart to. Uh, one of them is with us tonight, and she's going to be joining us shortly uh, to actually go over some case discussion or case review work based on the number of cases that she's working, the number of cases that I've been working. We've been able to connect uh, in a way uh, to where uh we decided to uh, do tonight's live together. So uh, that's going to be powerful. And I know that uh, anyone who has um, went out on YouTube and covered any of the cases that I mentioned before, whether it be the Cash Gurner case, whether it be the... Ahmad Aubrey case, Amari Nicholson case. Um, I mean, there are a number of them out there. Uh, we're going to be covering some casework uh, on specific cases that I have uh, began to look at, as well as cases that Q Carlock has been really working hard uh, at uh, bringing awareness to her channel. Uh, she is one of the fastest growing channels in the last month or so uh, because she's been, uh, let's just say, she's been burning the midnight oil, uh, bringing you up-to-date information on a lot of the different missing children cases uh, as well as other cases where there aren't any missing children. Uh, so we're going to be covering uh, a lot of information tonight. You're in for a great treat uh, because Q Carlock is, uh, let me tell you, she's on fire. And one of the things that uh, I like and love most about the, the work that she does is that she presents it live and she gives it to you straight off the table, bar none, straight off the table. And so uh, with that said, I just wanted to welcome everyone. Uh, we've got uh, Kanon Hurd, welcome. Maria Johnson, welcome. MJ's Q, we got another Q in the house? Okay, everybody loves the Qs. <laughs> I was always asked the question, why, why John Q? Now, were, you, were you trying to be like uh, Danzel Washington or something like that? No, no, I am me. I am me. And the reason that uh, I came up with the name that I came up with uh, is because that's what I'm known for uh, whenever I go out and shoot pool. Uh, people call me Q and it's stuck. So I said, well, I'll use that as a YouTube handle as well. And uh, those that uh, know me personally that join uh, the chat room know exactly, uh, exactly what, um, when they see my picture, uh, my avatar, that is, that is me. That is me on the table and you see what uh what two balls are left <laughs> that's when we rack them and stack them and knock them out but anyway enough about me um new subscribers okay great great we're expecting a load of people up in here tonight only because there's much love that's given not only to uh, the YouTubers working the case, but uh, specifically to a YouTuber working case like no other YouTuber uh, working the case. And I, I'll, I won't say YouTuber. Let me say content creator. Let me change that. Because as a content creator, one of the hardest jobs is to 
put together uh, casework, if you're doing case investigation work, if you're doing a news piece and just reporting it, if you have your own channel show like um, the Chris Thorne show and you're presenting uh, casework like that, uh, there are various different ways you can do casework. Uh, and uh, my hat goes out to those content creators doing a magnificent job. I do name drop. We do share. Um, and uh, I'm just glad that I'm in good company with uh, not only everyone here in the chat room, but uh, to the content creators that, uh, that give consent to join me on my platform and to share their insights, um, the intelligence factor, I love to call it. Uh, their side of the story as to how they uh, got on and how they developed their channel, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you're in for a very big treat tonight. I uh, just want to just cover a couple of things. We've got moderators in here. Love only. We want to show uh, some blue hearts for the boys. We want to get some green hearts out there. For Cash Gurnan, we want uh, some prayer hands for all of the missing children that uh, we've been talking about here on my channel, also on Q Carlock's channel. Uh, throw those hearts up there. So give Q a warm welcome uh, for thanking her for her time and uh, sliding out of her time zone. She's in a three-hour time zone. Everybody knows I'm in New York. She's on the west side, on the west coast. And uh, show us some love, everybody. Show her some love. Anyway, with that said, let me see if I can maybe do a little... Uh, let's see. Do a little screen share here. Uh, pick out what I want to show you to start off tonight's live. And to give you an idea as to how fast Miss Q is growing. And I don't know if you can see that yet. I'm bringing it up. Oh, good. You can. All right. Let's see. What did I do with it? Okay. I don't know if you can see that, but if you can, super. Yes, this is Q Carlock's channel, and uh, she's done a sensational job and going well over a thousand subscribers in a short period of time. In fact, she's already driving towards 3,000 as we speak. So uh, much love goes out to her for creating a channel that we can all rely and depend on and uh, really count on the information. She's got some talent in providing information and in such a sophisticated but yet intelligent and unique way. Uh, that's caught my eye, my attention. I said, okay, we've got, we've got another content creator that's come on board, got her own channel, and she is tearing it up. So without further ado, I want to bring on tonight's guest. This is an exclusive live and we're going to be getting into uh, we're going to be getting into some good stuff. So thank you all for joining us. And there she is, Miss Q Carlock. How are you? Can you hear me? Okay, I, I'm I'm trying a new headset out. Can oh yes. Me? Okay, good. Okay, you so I'm speechless. Yeah, I didn't know you were going to do all that. Now, you didn't have to do me like that. I don't oh. even know what to say. 
Seriously. Well, welcome, welcome to tonight's exclusive live. I am so glad that uh, you were able to slice out some, some critical time to join us. Thank you. And uh, just type a one in the chat for a good sound check. Make sure we don't have any feedback uh, going back and forth. I'm really just, you, you did too much. I'm sitting here like my mouth is open the whole time. Like he better be glad I'm muted because I would have been like, stop it. <laughs> I appreciate you, John. That, 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 that made me feel really good. Thank you. Well, that's good. Um, wow. You know, I can think of a thousand places to start right. uh, our tonight's uh, conversation, uh, but the best place to start. Okay. We got a lot of ones popping up in here. Okay, well over a hundred awesome. people. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Hello, everybody. I, I, I see you. Wow. Your chat is different the way it's set up. Um, they're back. Normally when I'm on a panel, I can't see everybody's chat at the same time. Awesome. I can't. I don't need my phone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's good. Everybody's yes. throwing up ones and love. We've got awesome. uh, special moderators this evening. Leslie B. Welcome. And uh, Aubrey. Welcome. These two moderators are absolutely magnificent on yes, Q are. Carlock's channel. Uh, they hold it down with her when she burns the midnight oil, and mm -hmm. uh, they put in some great, great, great work. So Thank I want to give a major shout out to Leslie B. and Aubrey for joining us tonight yeah. and welcoming Q Carlock. Amen. And getting tonight's live uh, off and running. Thank you. I have another one in here. She's not, she doesn't have the wrench right now. I got a couple actually. I'm sorry. Obsidian and Cassie. Oh, that's right. All my babies. All, all my right. babies. So but you don't have to make them all moderators. They don't, they don't have to work tonight. <laughs> I just need, I just knew Leslie and Aubrey have those links reserved and ready. So absolutely. Well, I've got uh, I've got uh, Miss Nay in the house as a moderator to help out uh, anything that we need. Uh, but we've got uh, we've got it covered tonight. We've got it covered Beautiful. big time. Beautiful. So um, I guess uh, you know my first uh, question and getting us rolling is how did you get started <laughs> with, uh, with your channel? What uh, what motivated you to say okay, that's enough. It's my turn. <laughs> You know what? Um, it's it's a little combination of things, but it, it was more so being in other chat rooms. And I've actually told this story before on my channel, being in other chat rooms. And um, I noticed that, I mean, I, I had something to say, you know what I mean? Like I have opinions, I have thoughts and you want to say it and, and you can only get so much in and you can't really. So yeah, it was more like, I need somewhere where I can just speak my piece, you know? And on top of that, I noticed how much people liked engaging in the chat rooms. And I was like, everybody wants a, a place where they can go and just speak their piece. So it, it was a combination of being tired of, of sitting in other chat rooms, trying to talk in there or talk to my TV and just saying, why don't you just go say it where you can be heard and give other people a place where they can have a voice as well without all the the blocks and criticisms and rules and you know you got to have rules but not on what people feel and think right. and that's a big thing for me so i wanted to create that environment and i wanted to share the stuff that i look at and care about and think about every day anyway and it's really that simple it didn't really have much to do with youtube it was just the platform to get me there i was shocked too at the growth seriously mm. Okay. Uh, and I know that, um, you know, one of the uh, hardest things as a content creator is actually uh, putting together content you want to share in an entirely different way mm -hmm. um, uh, to educate people. Right. And that's what I strive to to do on my channel. And when I saw that coming from your channel, I said, wait a minute, I'm going to hang out with, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to hang out with Miss Q and, and maybe learn some things. And, awesome. and you know, and I have a tremendous right. amount uh, just following your channel. And uh, I'm just glad that uh, we were able to connect for tonight's live yes. uh, so that, uh, you know, you can share a lot of, 
who you are, uh, some of the work that you've done, some of the casework that you've done, awesome. and uh, we can compare notes on, on some of the cases that we've covered. Uh, because I started my channel uh, on the Kanika Jenkins case. Okay, gotcha. And uh, that's what motivated me. I said, wow, I said, here's a 19-year-old uh, that was found, you know, deceased mm -hmm. in a hotel kitchen freezer. And I mm -hmm. said, what is that all about? Hot mess. And uh, the further I looked into it, I said, okay, let me see, let me see what I can do to, to bring more and more awareness to this case. And uh -huh. uh, I was... Um, connected with uh, Malika the Warrior uh, okay. at that time on her channel, and uh, we were able to cover uh, some very good casework together con uh, regarding the Kanika Jenkins case, and then I went independent of that and started growing my channel as well, so. Got it, got it. Yeah. If you, if you, so from that perspective, um, there is, there was a case that did well, it was the first thing that I posted, um, and that was Amari Nicholson. Mm, okay. Yeah, I went out to, because it was local, so I went out to the memorial, and then it is, the media didn't give me enough. We knew where he was, but we didn't know where he was, and um, I actually went on the Chris Thorne show, and I shared my video with him. And he was just like, excellent work, excellent video, excellent. And everybody in the audience and the crowd was like, the crowd, you know, the chat. <laughs> right. the, the, the crowd went, wow. <laughs> no, the chat was just really supportive. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, I, it, it all fit together with everything else I already told you. So then when I went back out, I told Chris, I'll go out and actually walk the scene, you know, and I'll get you more. And he said, okay, great. And once I did that, it was like, yeah, now I, I need to share that because other people might want to see that. So as far as the first case that I, that I put on YouTube, that would be Amari. But mm. Kanika, Kanika hits my heart too. I don't, I don't know all the ins and outs, but I got pretty deep in that rabbit hole and it's crazy. Absolutely. When I had uh, came across uh, Amari Nicholson, uh, that's when I started seeing uh, the case development on your channel, mm. the Amari Nicholson case. Yeah. And, uh, and, and then as I saw, you know, you progress in covering the various different cases that, uh, that you brought uh, attention to, yeah. uh, I went, uh, and I do a little shopping and a little peeking here and there. I started looking nice. at your playlist and I said, wait a minute, she's got Kanika. She's got Amari Nicholson, um, yeah. the, uh, Xavier Harrelson. And, I want all I mean, the babies. I wow. want all of them. I want as many as I can possibly talk about. You know, I just do. Why You can't stop. You know that. I don't yeah. know how you can focus on one. I would feel, I would go crazy though, but I always say it's OCD. <laughs> I need to do more than one thing at a time. So that works for me. Right. Yeah. So let's, I guess, let me see where I, I would like to, well, you, let me just do this. Wherever you, yeah, it's, I'll follow you or, yeah. We're going to, sure. we're going to go into a screen share mode. Because everyone knows when I go to screen share, we go to work. <laughs> I love your work. <laughs> By the way, with, with all that praising John did, y'all y'all already know he's excellent, though. I don't have to tell you that. Very intelligent man. Well, thank you. Uh, you uh, know, before we get started, uh, we like to throw up that copyright disclaimer and make sure we got the... Uh, the tail covered for any kind of um, striking activity or, you know, I call it hot mail, uh, not the one on uh, the internet either, you know, it's called hot <laughs> mail from YouTube. If you get hot mail yeah. from YouTube, look out. Right. You know, so uh, we put up our copyright disclaimer tonight under section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. We're here to share this information, information collected from the internet, information collected from YouTube, uh, information possibly collected from other social media platforms is only used here uh, for a point of criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, research, and education. Uh, all rights reserved. Uh, I do not own any of the material uh, that 
we're going to be sharing with you tonight. And as far as that's concerned, fair use uh, is a use permitted by copyright statutes that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. And that's where we got to go tonight. Okay. Jeez. So that's what you sent me. So, John, I need to read that every time, and that'll keep some of that heat down. From yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, to, yes. I gotta ask you. Yes, indeed. It'll okay. keep some of the heat down. Okay. And uh, people get uh, so flustered about, oh, they're sharing my work and they're not giving me credit and all this other right. stuff, you know. So, right, right, right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we'll put up our fair use notice in conjunction with the copyright notice and then we can get into talking and sharing okay. tonight's live with miss cute cock oh my just in case i missed anybody coming in uh maria johnson del rayburn joan bowden welcome Spacebound75, welcome. Jessica Moon, welcome. And I think I've covered, uh, I think I've covered as much as I can. But uh, tonight we're going to be talking about, and I guess I can begin to bring up some of the various different uh, works that uh, are still out there being worked on, current cases. But I want to step back a little bit. And let me see how I want to share this. Okay, let's come on up out of here. So if I have too many windows up, then. Yeah, oh, that's we're back. what I did okay. before I came on. I closed everything out. That's why it's about five minutes late. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because mm -hmm. when you close out stuff, you, you know, got to close out some of these windows uh, because they will start to lag and drag and mm -hmm. do a lot of different crazy things. All right. So mm -hmm. where do I want to begin? Let me go. Okay. We want to go. We went there. Okay. I think we can begin with our first case. Okay. And I'm sure that uh, you've come across uh, this particular case, I guess, in uh, in your research about Kendrick Johnson. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And his case was one of the first that caught my eye next to Kanika Jenkins uh, at the time of uh, this development. And I wanted mm -hmm. to take a little bit of a step back in time. And show some folks about the Kendrick Johnson case. It is still an active uh, case right now. Oh yeah. And we'd like to uh, we'd like to share some information on that and uh, and go from here. So here's where I began looking at the Kendrick Johnson case. CNN brought it to our attention, and this is how they did it. I'm just queuing it up. Tonight, Victor Blackwell has exclusive bring new evidence, photos, and videos that only raise more questions. And I want to warn you, some of the video you're about to see is graphic, difficult to watch. Here's Victor's report. It's the only video shot inside the Lowndes High School gym the day 17-year-old Kendrick Johnson was found dead. And with his parents' approval, we're showing it for the first time. Lowndes County, Georgia investigators say Kendrick's death was a tragic accident, that he climbed onto these rolled gym mats to reach for this shoe at the center of one mat, slipped, got stuck upside down, and died. County officials say the blood in this photo spilled after Kendrick's heart had stopped pumping hours after he had died. But Kendrick's parents say the photo and the video show something else. There's enough evidence to show that Kendrick was murdered. Miss Q... Uh, what did you think about that piece? Uh -huh. Where do I start? I mean, first of all, it shouldn't... Yes, what did you think of this piece that CNN... Uh, from, the, from the... Well, the piece was fine. I mean, I wasn't looking at 
as far as CNN goes, but do, or do, do you mean CNN or do you mean what they said in the piece? I want to understand. Yeah, just the overall. Yeah, just the overall report. Let me just put that on mute. I think we have a delay. Yeah, the um, oh, first of all, okay. I just have a problem with this whole this whole case, the way it was handled from the beginning to the end. Um, it was clearly foul play from the jump. The sheriff, I, I don't like the sheriff at all. I think he should not have his job anymore. Um, they just did too much wrong. I would definitely agree. I would definitely agree with that. Yeah, he was horrible. Sheriff, what was, and, was pi Pine? Mm -mm. Yeah. I mean, the way they treated that, uh, that crime scene, uh, knowing that it was contaminated, you know, like they say, you know, at a crime scene, you have uh, some basics that you have to, you know, make sure that there are uh, protocols in place for, you know, I mean, booties on the shoes, uh, you don't move the body, you don't move any materials whatsoever until the technician gets in there and starts, right. uh, you know, collecting ev evidence, uh, taking pictures of the evidence and everything. Uh, I think they, uh, they really just breeze through that whole situation to a point uh, to where we got what we got in terms of the report. And we all know that uh, it was just foul, just foul play. Ugly, yeah. Yeah. I don't know how they even got that to even slip through anybody's cracks. Well, I take that back because, you know, I've heard a lot of stuff, so I can't even say I don't know how. But it, it's always shocking when stuff like that happens. How in the hell do you think this this teenage boy, he wasn't a little baby or or, or a elementary kid that might have just been being silly. A teenage boy crawled up, climbed inside a mat and got stuck. That story don't make no sense. Mm -hmm. But that's what it was. and That's that's the way they told it. <laughs> Look at what came back. This is a CNN also reporting back on the uh, forensic analysis that was done by an independent uh, company uh, that went over the video surveillance footage, uh, both in the gym, the school hall, and I believe the exterior of the building, so. More now of our exclusive investigation to the death of Kendrick Johnson, specifically what school surveillance video can tell us about how he died and what's missing from it. Again, here's Victor Blackwell. CNN has hired Grant Fredericks and his team at Forensic Video Solutions to analyze the hundreds of hours of surveillance from Lowndes High School. Although he does not believe that jumpy video is the result of editing, he says there are some other major problems. Those files are not original files. They're not something that an investigator should rely on for the truth of the video. Uh, they've been altered in a number of ways, primarily in image quality uh, and likely in dropped information, information loss. There are also a number of files that are corrupted because they've not been processed correctly and they're not playable. Foul play, I don't know what does. Exactly. Exactly. Especially when they start messing with the footage. Here we go again. No, I didn't. I, I, I don't. And it's the same thing that happened. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. I was just saying I don't get it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, it's the same thing that happened in the Kanika Jenkins case. You know, mm -hmm. where you had video surveillance footage that uh, caught Kanika coming in to the Crown uh, Plaza Hotel in uh, Rosemont, and uh, she was walking uh, with her friends, entering the hotel. They captured her walking in uh, the south entrance of the hotel, and then down the food court, and on into the hotel where the interior uh, elevators that connect to the hotel. The next time we see Kanika is when she's walking inebriated on the lower level uh, basement area, <laughs> Uh, conference area, uh, and then all of a sudden she ends up uh, deceased mm -hmm. in an industrial kitchen freezer that right. was supposed to be off. Yeah. Mm. 
another crazy, crazy story. Like, really? Sometimes Absolutely. I can't even believe what they tell us. Like, I <laughs> literally and figuratively, like, did y'all just say that? But they did. Absolutely. I'm just queuing up uh, our next um, our next portion of tonight's live. And uh, okay. definitely, if you are not subscribed to Miss Q Carlock, go to her channel. And I'm just going to. And if you are not subscribed to <laughs> Mr. John Kill, <laughs> get on board right now. And don't y'all forget to hit that like. I just wrote it in the chat. Hit the like, hit the share. It's the only way this matters. Or we just up here having a conversation, which is awesome. I love talking to John. But get it out there, y'all. That's the point. So, uh, StreamYard, is, it, it's okay for now. But uh, like I said, as technology improves, uh, we can always make changes. But uh, here's the story that that opened up uh, the Kanika Jenkins case for me. And this was the oh initial... Uh, footage and report that came with it. So if everyone can see that, let's go to our next case. Connie Lockridge, how are you? Priscilla D, how are you? TT, how you doing? Kayshawn is in the house. How you doing? Let's continue. Also breaking tonight, hours of new video are released revealing more about a woman found dead in a hotel tell freezer. CBS 2's Audrina Vegas joins us. So you poured through this video. What is it showing us? 36 hours of video, and this was just released just a few hours ago. This video shows Kanika Jenkins walking into the kitchen, but we never see her entering the freezer. And tonight, that is why her family is not satisfied with the theory that she walked into the freezer on her own. Surveillance video shows Kanika Jenkins walking with friends at the Crown Plaza Hotel early Saturday morning. We see her a few hours later by herself. At one point, she stumbles out of an elevator. Later, she repeatedly hits the wall walking down this hallway. Another camera catches her running into a stairwell and then catching her fall. Video time codes appear to show Kanika roaming the hotel for over an hour. She's trying to find her way, and no one from Crown Plaza Hotel responds to her. Around 3.30 a.m., Kanika enters a lower-level kitchen in the hotel. She walks out of frame, but then she's captured walking here on another camera. But we still don't see her entering the freezer. I want to see all. I want to see her actually walking into this freezer and closing us up within this freezer. I want all of the recordings, all of the communications, all of the reports, the statements that were taken. I want to know the individuals that were there. Tonight, Rosemont police say 31 people were at the party with Kanika inside the hotel room, booked with a fraudulent credit card. Police say they're still trying to identify and find 15 of the party goers. Meanwhile, autopsy and toxicology results have yet to be released. Why is Kanika dead? That's where we need to be. We will get to the bottom of it. We will only go to where the facts lead us. Kanika's family attorneys say they will be conducting their own independent investigation. They're also considering a second autopsy. Rob and Erica, that's because there's still a lot of unanswered questions tonight. You know, it's, it's, it's curious because we heard that the authorities were going to show the family the 36 hours of surveillance tape, but clearly they haven't seen it yet. Yeah, at about 3 o'clock this afternoon, they said they had not seen that video and they've been requesting it for about 48 hours. Okay. <laughs> they love to report and repeat. <laughs> um, so my thoughts are that's a whole bunch of crap and it's you know it's sad because it's almost like that's just my take on everything these days but it's so much crap out there that it's just what it is what it is right that was um, that was mishandled as well from the jump the hotel is I'm sorry can you hear I'm me sorry. okay Oh, what the background? yeah, it's just this, it, it's just this darn <laughs> clear. It just I, wants to just keep going. <laughs> I can't really oh, hear it. I mean, it's really, really low. I don't even know if the chat can hear it. It's like in the background. It's not, is it okay. over me? Because I don't think it is. That's weird. No, no, we're, we're good now. We're good now. I shut That's them so off. Funny. <laughs> I, if that happens to me too, that's why I'm giggling so much. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, it was mishandled from the beginning. Um, I think for, for sure the hotel messed up big time. And I don't know where law enforcement came in and, and, and 
decided that they would help the screw up and now everybody's got a cover up. That's the way I see it because that baby didn't walk into a freezer. Of other uh, gentlemen here, I forget their names. It's been a little bit. I think it's uh, X and Sticks, along with Mike. Mike, who was at the party, tapped Irene on the head, signaling to her that he's ready to leave. And then, as they do, they go and get in Cece's car and swing around to the back of the hotel. So I said, "Well, okay." He said the party was dead, so he left abruptly. All right. AP, how are you? So in sharing this information, we know that uh, Mike Mike has got uh, a nice extensive criminal record with the Chicago Police Department, along with uh, a number of other uh, people that were there at the party, the majority of them got records. Uh, this was uh, Rico, Kanika's boyfriend. Did you say that like you were shocked? Come on. <laughs> you know that crowd. That crowd was really, really rough. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You had the street of the street of Chicago yeah. there. Yeah. In a, in a hotel in an area of Rosemont. Uh, that consisted of what uh, population 4,400, 4,200 people in a small populated area with their own police, their own business divisions and things of that nature. So uh, yeah. they treated this case, uh, you know, the way they wanted to treat it. And obviously yeah. we found out how they treated it. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. So let me just... Uh, Skip forward here a little bit. If I can get to a certain portion. Okay. I think I'm getting to the part where we had actually seen Kanika enter the uh, upper kitchen area. Trying to see if I can just give me a second here. Oh, here uh, I was demonstrating what could have possibly happened to Kanika during the time she disappeared behind the wall. She was then confronted by someone, I believe, in my opinion. And so got I. into an and got into an altercation with the individual that was well past the wall outside of camera view, mm -hmm. and got into an entanglement with them. And you know how females fight females; mm -hmm. they get into the hair, they get into pulling, they get into fisting, mm -hmm. uh, uh, wrestling, uh, kinds of uh, you know, and yeah. And, this is Rumbling how I believe, around. yeah. Mm -hmm. This this is how I believe Kanika's hair got messed up. That makes sense. In the uh, in the brawl. So let me see if I can skip a little bit. I can certainly see actually that. See. And you can actually see for yourself. The hair is all over the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That would explain how somebody dropped their lip gloss and their hair scrunchie in, in, on the ground in the freezer. Because it was exactly. there. Mm -hmm. It's not there. I don't remember, Leslie. John, what was the cause of death listed on the autopsy? A cause of death was uh, hyper, hypothermia due to uh, cold <laughs> exposure with uh, contributing factors of alcohol and to pyramate, which was 3,000 nanograms. Mm -mm -mm. to pyramate okay now I can come back and uh, come out of screen share with that right seven fast and, if she was in a freezer right mm -hmm. talking to the chat you see seven sass okay so Amari um, 
Well, he is gone. I'll just start there. He he didn't make it. He was abused by his mother's boyfriend. And um, initially we didn't we didn't know that he was just missing. They always start out missing, y'all. So um he gets on the, the news with his girlfriend and he lies and lies and tells us that he uh he was at home on the phone in the bed and Mario was had just finished eating cereal and was playing with his toys. And somebody knocked on the door. It was about six, between six and seven in the morning. Somebody knocked on the door and it was Amari's dad's sister. And she said that his mom had sent him to get her, him. And so he said he went back into the room to get his phone and pack a bag. And while he was doing that, he was calling her to see, did she send somebody to come and get him? While he was doing that, this this auntie, hi Molly, we love you too. Hi, um, Miss Molly's in the room. Yeah, she just popped in and said, "Love you both." Oh, okay. Love you back, Miss <laughs> Molly. Love you back. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, so he said that while he was getting the bag ready and making the call, the auntie grabbed Amari. Ran down three flights of stairs and, and and disappeared. And he was missing. Mm-hmm. That was the story. Initially. That's how it started. And we uh and we looked and we searched and we believed. Well, not all of us, you know. I I call bullshit from the first interview, but a, a lot of people saw through him. But we had to search and we're searching. While we're searching, he actually confesses and um later on we found out he even drew a little a little scribble scrabble map and showed him right where the body was and everything so he actually is the reason we found amari or we could still be looking i mean not really because of where he put him i think i think that the odor would have everybody would have detected it you know soon enough but um you know we would have been looking for a while longer but he is in jail now and he's facing capital murder plus other counts because he tried to snatch the the gun out of the deputies or his officers pocket in the interrogation room so he'll be there for a minute it's gone amari's mother taylor nicholson says she got the news her son was missing on wednesday while she was in colorado taking care of her mother who was attacked by a dog She left Amari with her boyfriend, who considers Amari his son, at the Emerald Suites near the Strip. Now, he says Wednesday, just after 6 a.m., someone knocked on the door. And it was a woman saying that she was her baby daddy's sister. Mm -hmm. And she said she was there to pick up my stepson. Terrell Rhodes says she called Amari's mom in Colorado. I turned around to call her to tell her if... If this is, is, are this true, is, was this really prearranged? And as I'm doing that, she says she don't need anything for my stepson. They got everything they need for him and basically just took off. Nicholson says she missed Rhodes' call. No, I was still asleep, so my phone, I, I didn't hear the first few calls until it was already too late. Now, this is where things get a little confusing. The mother tells me she and Rhodes got into an argument about her being away from Vegas and told him someone would be stopping by, but didn't say exactly who and didn't say why they were coming over. But you didn't know her, though, correct? You've never seen her? So you didn't, did you not know this person you're letting take Amari away? I mean, from my knowledge, I already... Um was told like someone was going to stop by somebody was going to but i never knew who so i still had that in my head that somebody was coming by but bottom line nicholson says she never gave anyone permission to come and pick up amari she says rose did not give amari to the woman she took him and just wants him back safe it was like three counts of prostitution she got out on or Wow, of all people to be solicited mm-hmm. by. Yep. 
<laughs> I like to call that look at God. See, you, she might deserve to be behind them bars and, and she may have to go for another reason. Or now she has to pick another um, career field or, or whatever she called it. Can't yeah, well, whatever she calls it. You got that right. You, know? <laughs> you got to find another line of work, lady. My Come goodness. Come on, exactly, though. Really? I mean, your baby just, you, you should at least get off the internet for a little while. But they said right after it, she did not only not get off, but the, her prices went up. I said, oh, my God. Yeah. But, uh, but you know, I wanted, to, I wanted to share that uh, just a little piece of the cases that uh, you've been covering yeah, uh, awesome. since your channel uh, is definitely uh, taken off. It's, uh, it's headed toward, uh, I think, uh, 3,000, if not. Uh, yeah. 4,000, 5,000. 5, <laughs> it's climbing fast, and that's great. Oh, um, 3,000. It is. It is going fast. I just, you know, I really just do me, and it it, it works out. <laughs> I'm looking like, who is this? Okay, let me open it. And I open it, and I hear, oh, there's a mom, there's a baby. His name is James Riker Bill. And from what I hear, a lot of people, those emails get ignored. For me, it was like, oh, hell no. Yeah, of course I'll talk. Well, yeah, bring it on. You know what I mean? So right. I just, I hope that a lot of us creators can like also pay attention to the stories that the people that come into our chat room have, because a lot of this true crime is going on right here. Absolutely. Uh, so I've got a picture of uh, the current case that uh, Miss Q is is working on right now. I think she's done a sensational job in not only covering the story, but actually uh, in the interview itself, uh, what she was able to uh, to cover with uh, the mom and uh, the story behind it. It is absolutely incredible. So Palestine Police Department opening up the death investigation into James Riker Beale. When I first heard this story uh, on Q's channel, um, I believe it was uh, either Aubrey or Leslie or one of the other moderators uh, that covers her channel uh, dropping the link. I went to the link as fast as I could uh, and took a snapshot uh, and then posted this on my community bulletin board uh, because there was a petition that uh, Ms. Q was working on and I wanted uh, to be a part in contributing to uh, getting the numbers that uh, Miss Kara, I think her name is Kara. Yep, Kara. With yeah. Kara. Mm -hmm. uh, she was looking for uh, certain numbers to get a petition over uh, so that this way uh, they could look into the death investigation of little James Riker Beale. So uh, that went on my community bulletin board. I came back, went back into the chat, told Miss Q I had posted it. And so uh, I think uh, she was able to complete and fulfill that petition, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah it, it surpassed the number. So she's, she's, we're just going to keep it going now. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank Great. you so much for jumping in on that. Thank you. Great. Now, uh, you also have some good news uh, for us. But before we get there, I okay. uh, just wanted to say to the chat room, if you are not familiar with this story, please go to Miss Q Carlock's channel. And uh, she's got all of the video uh, materials uh, on a playlist, and you can actually go down that playlist to find uh, this particular story, the interview, um, and everything uh, pertaining to uh, Little James, uh, how the story unfolded, what the mother went through, what she tried to do, what the Cook County Medical Examiner's Office told her, right. uh, and, a, and a whole bunch of uh, uh, different things to put someone through what I would call emotional torture, because mm -hmm. they didn't want to tell her anything pertaining to what happened to her son. Right. Until there were certain things that did show up in the autopsy report. Uh, that she questioned uh, to the point to where, uh, you know, it, it was just, you know, one, one thing after the next. And mm -hmm. for marks to show up on the stomach and marks on the, uh, on the spinal column uh, yeah. at uh, point C, yeah, cervical uh, mm -hmm. uh, area of the spinal cord and uh, red marks down at the lumbar area. I said, well, this kid was laying on his stomach. 
hmm. over something or on top of something while someone with a two big pair of hands held hmm. him down from behind his neck mm -mm. and behind his lumbar area just above the buttocks. Mm -mm -mm. And then the story unfolded from that point. So uh, there is some good news. I'll let Miss Q tell you what the <laughs> good news is. Lord have mercy. It's here. J for K. Save Summer Wells. Cash Gurney. Just gonna, yeah. So many names. This was the oh, case. Classic and sincere. Where are the boys? Yes. Where the hell are the boys, man? That's a good question. Yeah. For seven months now, these boys have been missing uh, from the timeline of December 21st of 2020. And uh, we've been Alleged, told a wait, lot of different... Allegedly. allegedly yeah. yeah allegedly, <laughs> you know you got to say that because we know Yeah. <laughs> Because <laughs> uh, I I've got my I've got my uh, ideas on a different timeline, but mm -hmm. uh, from what we've been told by the uh, law enforcement of California City, also by the Bakersfield Police Department, uh, that they are on a current investigation, open investigation on our missing boys, classic and sincere, Orson and Orrin West. Um, and, uh, when I came across this case, I said, oh, come on, you've got to be kidding me. And it grabbed me right away. Uh, I said, Amari Nicholson and, and all the other stories came after, but this was the one that I was working on and producing content on YouTube, uh, for, uh, content, uh, created awareness, uh, for this case, uh, I can, I'm con going to continue to, uh, to bring content on this case as it unfolds. It is in a, not a limbo state legally, but it appears as though it may be in a limbo state with the searches because the Bakersfield Police Department has been holding a lot of things close to the chest and is not really giving us the kinds of reports that we would appreciate, whether it be on a week to week or a bi-weekly basis on uh, their, you know, their progress on this case. Uh, but, uh, from what we were told, December 21st, 2020, these boys went missing off of Aspen Avenue in California city, California, and, uh, the adoptive parents being Jacqueline and Trezell West, uh, made a, uh, press conference, made a bold statement to say that, uh, the boys went missing right underneath their nose when they were the only two children out of six children they had at that time these boys went missing and in the way they told that story on the uh, on the news conference it blew me away uh, right after i saw it maybe one or two times i said there is something wrong with this story <laughs> the whole damn thing <laughs> yes you know uh who starts off a press conference what uh, it was cold. Uh, I, I, you know, I wanted to make a fire. Mm -hmm. uh, right. I went out, I'm throwing wood and the gate is open. And I, you know, I go in the house. I, I didn't see him. I, I walked back outside. I didn't see him. You got it uh, down. You, know, I forgot, you got it down. Uh, I forgot I left the gate open. Uh, I, we searched the house first. And right. then we went outside, mm -hmm. and then I got in my car and mm -hmm. went around the neighborhood, hit a couple of corners, yeah, he and uh, sp spoke to the neighbor. He didn't know nothing. The one guy uh, way down there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that one dude that never yeah. had a name and never surfaced ever. Yeah. You got it down. I didn't Absolutely. think it could sound any sillier than it did, but you made it really funny. I, I, <laughs> I appreciate that. Well, I mean, that's how he sounded. And I said, and that's okay. exactly how he sounded. Yeah, you know what would make him think that people would believe this? He's on, you know, national TV, local oh TV God. there in California City, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then national TV as it progressed. And uh, I'm saying they're going to stick by that up until uh, Jacqueline had said that uh, you know she believes, definitely believes mm -hmm. uh, that they were definitely picked up. Picked up, yep, yep. Just like just like Summer Wells was definitely abducted. You know, they always just right. happen to know exactly what it is when they lie in. People that have actually been 
what is it? Soil samples to, to yes. oh man, yeah, it's mm -hmm. there's yeah. Stay tuned. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the next story that came up uh, on my radar was Micaiah Bryant's story out of Columbus, Ohio. 16-year-old that was uh, shot down uh, by Ohio police uh, in a way that we have never seen uh, any kind of uh, police action, if you will, uh, taken the way it was taken, uh, only to find out that uh, it was a 16-year-old he shot down uh, in reference to a confrontation in front of... Um, uh, their adoptive mother's house. Right. Okay. And uh, it, it was sad to see how this unfolded and only to find out that daddy was at the scene of the crime as well. Mm -hmm. Daddy was there. Let me just, let me just do this real quick. See if I can, cause I didn't do this before, but, uh, just to give you, I think it was in here. I think it was in here. Let's see if I can pull it. Let me see if I can pull it up. Uh, no, that's not mm -hmm. the folder. That's awesome, Tanya. She said, I wear a Sincere and Classics bracelet and have the bumper sticker on my car. And it'll stay that way until they're found. I love it. Represent. Okay. Show their faces. That's Say right. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's try to get through to this one here. And this was a screenshot I was able to capture of the, okay, it's, it's finally up. Okay. Of daddy being here at the time of the shooting. And I believe this was the uh, grandparent, the biological guardian. No, not the biological guardian. The adoptive uh, mother, guardian of Micaiah Bryant. <clears throat> and train, but yeah. if they can uh, get even better at their marksmanship, uh, uh, because that's what right. that police officer was listed as a marksman. Mm, he could no. have decided, yeah. He could have shot that knife right out of her hand, like I said. Yeah, he could have hit her in a, a in an entirely different area of her body to neutralize her. Now that's yeah, yeah see, but but again, that's just not that's not they don't have to. So I guess mm -hmm. maybe not. Maybe he didn't even think of it because it's not in the training. But it should be like uh, use your discretion, also, right? Right. If you have the option to do something different and still save a life, don't kill nobody. Yeah, they, they need to put that in the book. Yeah. So their training manual needs to be revised. Mm -hmm. uh, also, their neutralization techniques need to be upgraded uh, in some way, shape, or form, whether another le uh, non-lethal weapon could have been used. Uh, they have to work on that, Columbus, Ohio. That's for sure. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and this one right here on the screen... Uh, what is his name? They don't have his name right here with the uh, gold Hammond. chain on. <laughs> yeah, I think his name, last name is Hammonds or something oh. like that. Mr. Hammonds. They think Mr. That Hammonds. He, see, he needs Amari's Law. I mean, you were there. You were the parent. You watched this happen. That's that thing right there. You're, you're still indirectly responsible because you are supposed to stop that. You are the adult, even if it wasn't the parent. You're just an adult, period, but you're her father. Mm-hmm. Nah, nope, not cool. Absolutely. So we covered a little bit of uh, information on uh, that that case on my channel. I just wanted to. Just kinda... Nice. I didn't. I didn't cover any of Makai. That's really nice. Yeah. So the latest on this is that they did lawyer up the family, and uh, last I've heard. Uh, this attorney, I believe her name is Michelle, and I forget her last name. I'm sorry, Michelle, um, is the attorney that represents the family in the killing of Micaiah Bryant. And she's going after CPS uh, because uh, there seems to have been some kind of uh, uh, rush to judgment 
on uh, placing Micaiah at that particular uh, location. Uh, so that's being looked at, at least on the legal side, and we'll see what comes up out of that. This case is going to take some time to put together for her in defense of the uh, of the family. And obviously you can see good old dad over here with the pom-pom on top of his head now. He got mm -hmm. some hair. Oh, that's him. Okay. okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's him. I think he went... Oh, it's yeah, the mask. I, the mask helps. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. I, nobody can see you. They won't recognize you. Not like the picture I just showed. Right. Not at all. Yeah. He, he actually looks, he actually looks yeah. different. How He's many... Also, so are they suing the police department for what overkill too or i mean how many shots were fired yeah there were four shots fired and mm. four penetrated jesus so uh that along with uh, going after cps as to uh you know why she was even there why she was even there at that house at that location at the time but here we have a four-year-old that was removed from his crib mm -hmm. according to video surveillance footage of a baby cam at the location mm -hmm. and police came to the conclusion based upon the um monica sherrard's word the woman who was there watching the kids uh, the boys uh, his brother carter and pointed the finger at this young man right here, 18 years of age, this is Darian Brown, mm -hmm. and pointed him out and told the uh, investigative uh, detectives that that's the person who snatched Cash Gurner from his crib and walked out with him from her house. Yeah, that's what she said. And so the police uh, assumed that uh, they got their man, they went, they apprehended him based upon a, uh, a referral from uh, the, uh, I think it is the uh, Child Abuse Center, mm -hmm. and then arrested him and also found clothing articles, which were sunglasses, an Adidas jacket, and shoes matching the intruder that night who came in and grabbed cash and took him out of his crib. So it went from a kidnapping charge, burglary kidnapping charge, and then this was escalated to a, now a capital murder charge by the DA's office. There have been no indictments on this particular case because the DA, I'm sure, has got plenty of work to do to try to get as much evidence to support a capital murder charge in order to convict Darian Brown for murder. Mm, capital murder. Capital murder. Mm -hmm. Only because the only because the child was under 10. Yeah. Yep. So where do you even start? Are you I, I, I don't <laughs> even want look, I don't even want to make nobody mad. You already know. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I what I will say first of all is we need justice for cash. Yes. And that's my main appeal. The right person or people need to pay for this. Okay. Dragging that baby out of his bed at night in whatever condition he may or may not have been in and doing what they did to him and then dropping him off in the middle of the street. Somebody needs to pay. The right person needs to pay. That's just how I feel. Yes. And that's going to come out. Yes, that is, it is most certainly going to come out. Was it Darian Brown in the night vision that snatched cash from his bed and then came back 727 in the morning <laughs> in the day vision uh, to pat Carter on his head, say a few words, and then Carter finding out his brother was not in the bed. Right. A phone call from the house earlier than that, 727, was quote-unquote a non-emergency phone call made from Monica Sherrod's house based on a burglary call. Was that call ever followed up on? We, we'll need to find that out. Mm -hmm. And if not, why not? 
But at 1048, a call rang out to the uh, police department from uh, someone jogging on the street that stated that they found a child, Cash Kernan, just with a pair of shorts on, no other clothing, nothing, barefoot, and in a pool of blood from being stabbed. Someone also said that there was a family member, I believe it was a 18 year old that was at the scene uh, during the time that Cash was found and stated that they saw one of the family members at the crime scene. Sure did. Mm -hmm. So whether that is true or not, that still stands to uh, still come out as this case unfolds. Mm -hmm. uh, but right now, uh, Darian Brown's attorney, Mr. Heath Harris, and uh, the assistant attorney that's uh, also representing Darian Brown comes from the Johnny Cochran law firm, Valerie Bastion. So uh, he's got some heavy hitters working with him and an independent investigation right now by a private investigator looking into the matter of what happened February 8th at a different house, different location, different people, but pertaining to a two-year-old being used as a body shield by Darian Brown, so to speak, mm -hmm. to prevent from being assaulted by the, uh, the parent or the grandparent of the child uh, who welded a knife that he had gotten from the kitchen to try to protect his family. <laughs> Mm -mm -mm. I, yeah, I don't even believe in Grandpa. I'm waiting on him to come on the news or something. As far as I'm concerned, Grandpa is Santa Claus. Yeah. I just, I where? Where is he? Like, this guy, where is he? That's all. We're talking about the high-profile case, and you, now you're involved. You, He ain't wrote a tweet or nothing. I mean, or maybe he has, and I just haven't seen it. But that ain't enough to um, have somebody getting kidnapped charges to, uh, three months later and three days after Cash was murdered. We only covered enough information which gives the appearance that it looked like Darian Brown. At a moment. Yeah, at a moment. Mm -hmm. At a moment. I will but agree. We'll see. We'll see mm -hmm. how that rolls out. Yeah. Next Justice up. For cash. Justice for Cash. Justice yes. for Cash. Yes. Yes, definitely. Summer Wells. Here's our mm -hmm. summer. Thank you, Aubrey and Leslie, and if there are any other of my mods in the uh, chat for assisting in tonight's special live covering all of these cases with Miss yes. Q. Thank you, all. Uh, yeah, it's about awareness. Yeah, it is most certainly about awareness. Yes, Our current so teamwork. Case. Teamwork. Our current case, Miss Q. What do you think about the Summer Wells case? <laughs> <laughs> you would oh, ask me first. Yes, it's a lot going on here. It's a too lot. much going on. It's too much going on. I still think, though, that this family has a secret and they've been trying to keep it under wraps for a very long time, but it's unraveling now. My money is still in that household somewhere. Mm -hmm. Definitely in the family. Grandma is. In grandma, they might as well put cuffs on her as far as I'm concerned. She ain't said a word, but she's guilty as sin in my book. She goes off for two minutes and then she comes back and she asked the boys where Summer was. And the, mm -hmm. one of the boys said that she was downstairs in the basement playing with her toys. And so she goes down, she called, well, she goes to the top end of the doorway to call mm -hmm. down for summer mm -hmm. and she doesn't answer. She normally answers when I call her mm -hmm. and, says, mm -hmm. and then uh, she goes downstairs and finds out that she was gone. Gone. Right. You've got to do the eyes when you say, yeah, that. you got to stretch those red <laughs> eyes, and the big cheeks. Yep. And Another said, vanishing. Yeah. Right. Right in the basement. Right, of your own home. Yeah. Right there. And you're outside on the other side of the house, not even 20 feet away, 20 to 40 feet away. Mm hmm. No, no dogs sense. barking. No dogs barking. What kind of dogs are those? I don't care if it was eight 
or 20 because Allie said it was 20 dogs. (laughs) She counted them out. She said it was 12 and they just had eight puppies. But, you know, Chris Chris McDonough doesn't want to believe that, but Allie counted them dogs out. But either way, one dog should bark, let alone, okay, (laughs) come on. (laughs) <laughs> Give me a break That driveway is a mile long Starry night And you have to know exactly where you're going To go to their house You do yeah. And the house is so isolated So secluded Right You know, we're not talking about a house On a regular street block Mm-mm. We're talking about Mm-mm. a house in the middle of nowhere That's got so much foliage Tree yep. foliage, underbrush Dips, uh, rolling hills, all yeah. kinds of different things. Yeah. And here this child went missing after they had went a number of places that mm-hmm. wasn't brought up by Candace in the original uh, news report. At all. They went to a bunch of different places right. that proves the entire timeline up. Yep. She mentioned like two two little stops. It was like, we just hit this while we were waiting on that. We did this. And then we went, you know, dropped him off and we went home. She left right. out so much. That right there is like, come on. Yeah. From picking up Hunter to going to the hospital to pick up her mother mm-hmm. to going to the pharmacy to put in the order for the prescriptions mm-hmm. that mama needed. Mm-hmm. And then from there, uh, going over to a, a tobacco shop. Yep. Uh, then from there to the swimming hole, to the swimming hole, 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, she says, give or take. <laughs> and then on the way back, they go to a CBD shop. Right. And uh, this is where. The house. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And then stop at another store to pick up the milk containers and. Priceless uh, grocery store. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Priceless grocery store. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then to go back and drop Hunter back off to his house, to Allison's house, and then they go back home. Or did they make another stop? Uh, You know what? It's something about the way she said home to me that sticks out. And I've said it before, and I'm not going to stop saying it because it's something, it's something. I know one of these body language people should have said something by now. It's, she says, you know, all those things, well, not all those things, all the things she said they did, 15, 20 minutes, you know, and then she said, and then we took him home, and she she held her thought and kind of closed her eyes, and and then she said, and then we, we, and then we went home. It was the way she said she took him home that makes me think something happened before she took him home. Mm-hmm. It's just the way she said it. it. It just, I don't know. I don't know. That would definitely put him in the mix. I know, but it's how she said it. And uh, Donald, Donald Wells being the yes, uh, biological right. father of, mm-hmm. uh, of Summer. Uh, I just don't understand why people want to keep talking <laughs> and talking and talking, and every time you listen to them, the story story changes a little bit. Uh-huh. Uh, something gets added. Something gets uh, deleted. Something mm-hmm. gets moved. Now it's a different shade. It's a different color. It takes a little longer than it mm-hmm. did before. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're just going to talk themselves. I think the House of Cards is coming down around those two. Uh, and Mom going back to uh, Grandma, excuse me, Weird. going back to Wisconsin. Weird. In the middle of your granddaughter missing, my mama wouldn't go anywhere. She would Who relocate. Nobody Who does that. I t- I'm telling you, grandma is common denominator. That's her name. Yeah, let's get an ace band around that uh, that knee of yours that's been giving you problems, whether it's a prosthetic limb or mm-hmm. whatever she's using. For 11 uh, years? Or, yeah. <laughs> And uh, wrap it up and, uh, and, and you know, grab a cane, grab a walker. Let's start walking around the property and let's see if we can find her. Yeah, let's get out there and, and with a bullhorn and, and call her name. I mean, she can do something with that little leg. She she did all that that day. She got out the car at Priceless. They went to the she they got went out to at the water park. park. Yeah, yeah, she got all this. I mean, swimming hole. Yep. Swimming hole. Yep. Grandma's, I don't even think that leg is bad. I think she peel, what they call it, peel pill-seeking. Mm. I really do. I think she mm. just, you know, plays hurt and gets that, that refill. Right. 
I really do. And then they use those pills. Mm. But for uh, those of you uh, that are following the case, uh, I'm sure you've heard about the interview room with Chris Madonna, yeah. who had did a sensational uh, interview with both Hunter and Allison yes. so far. And he's got candy coming up. Candice. Candice. Yeah, can, can, yeah, she got the uh, Candice cane coming up. <laughs> Hopefully she's, uh, she's you know, sober. She, Chris going, hey, sober or drunk, <laughs> Chris is going to get those answers, man. You know. J for K, Kanika Jenkins. Hopefully uh, her mother will be able to, you know, get her case resolved and get some kind of at least civil closure in her case and then turn right around and open up a criminal investigation uh, to go back over this case again. She's got all the time in the world and really nothing to lose because she's already had a loss. Yeah. Uh, but this one, uh, my hat's off to you. I, my gut feeling, the way I felt when you brought up the news that, uh, that uh, James's uh, father, uh, Thomas, uh, was apprehended uh, mm -hmm. for what uh, he not only did to Kara, uh, also James, when you posted that video and I said, they got him? Mm -hmm. And I said, there is Miss Q. And I said, because of your channel, because of your platform, uh -huh. I, have a, I have a heavy feeling that you made a major contribution in helping that petition not only go over the numbers, but maybe even to convince the police to get wow. this guy finally. Wow. Well, I didn't so, do it by myself. All I did was reach out and, and you know, connect. Yeah. Cause you went not only on your channel, you went to Molly go lightly's channel. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe you went, uh, you've done a number of things. And I said, wow, this, th this case is unfolding. And sure enough, I think it was a week after uh, give or take five, seven days. Uh, uh, I heard you say they got him. And I said, oh, yes. I said, collectively working together, we can make a difference. When, uh, there's family in the chat. I'm going to. He, he's just, um, <laughs> he knows I want to bring up a new baby. There's family in the chat from McKenzie, the baby I talked to you about. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. definitely. That's the one that I uh, i don't believe I have a picture of Mackenzie, so. No, you don't. I, can no. I share it from here? Yes, okay. yes. Let, let's get you, let's go to share mode and okay. uh, justice for all uh, no, of these you can, children. Yeah, finish what you were saying. I wasn't going to let you forget Mackenzie. No way. And I know you weren't going to forget. We talked about it before. <laughs> yes. That's grandma right there in the chat. Oh, um, okay. Hello, Mackenzie's grandma. grandma. She's justice for Mackenzie in your chat. Beautiful. Beautiful. You know better, Grandma. You know better. <laughs> and uh, once again, we did talk about the Kendrick Johnson case, uh, which uh, all of these cases now, uh, one behind the other, back to back to back to back, uh, yeah. is, is all moving forward. Uh, I'm glad that they uh, had the... Um, the intentions, good intentions, that is to reopen this case, which is still on the table. Uh, so hopefully we'll hear some good news as to how they're going to proceed to get uh, justice for uh, Kendrick Johnson. Uh, the good for his thing family. is, at least we know his parents didn't do it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> God, right. Geez. Too much of that going on. Absolutely. So now I'm going to uh, come out of our photo gallery here. We wanted to share this with you uh, tonight. It, uh, it does take a lot of research to really remember all of the moving parts, components, casework, dialogue, who's who, mm -hmm. uh, timelines, uh, forensics, uh, what the police did, how the investigations are going on, et cetera, et cetera, whenever we cover these cases like this. But uh, my hat's off to all the content creators out there, especially the ones that we've been talking about and sharing with you here tonight, uh, covering these cases and much, much more. So stay tuned for any updates regarding any one of these cases because they're coming out on a day-to-day, hour-to-hour basis. So. Yeah. We wanted to share that with you, and I'm glad that we were able to 
to do this work together tonight, Miss Q. Everything's happening so fast. I was just thinking about that. Remember, like, there was this cash and then Sam. Oh, we didn't even talk about Sam Olsen. Sam Olsen happened. And then summer, it was just back to back to back babies, either dying or being yes. murdered or, or missing. That's why there's so much right now. It's like every day you got to check on this case and that case and that because all that happened. Not to mention yes. the babies that were hurt before all that. These just happened. Thank you for bringing up uh, Sam Olson. That was Absolutely. another case yes. uh, where, uh, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend get together. Boyfriend takes biological with him away from the biological mother for a year. She's out searching for him. He's in another state with some girlfriend, Miss Balboa. I think uh, Chris Thorne says uh, Miss uh, Teresa Rocky Balboa. with him away from the biological mother for a year she's out searching for him he's in another state with some girlfriend miss balboa i think uh, chris thorne says uh miss uh, teresa rocky balboa uh in his uh, on his show yeah he and, sure uh, does <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's right man she choked she choked her dude almost out jeez yeah. Every time he says her name that way, I was, oh my goodness, I see. Chris, <laughs> Chris has his own, own signature to call these people what they are. Yes, he does. But uh, they, were, they were able to arrest her, uh, finding um, Sam, Samuel uh, Olson, in a, in a tote container in a hotel, uh, being moved uh by another boyfriend or ex-boyfriend or significant other to a different location so while they were out there searching for samuel they were actually moving him at the same time and i said well wow i said what is it with this with this girl teresa you know what has she got over these guys that were helping her commit a crime I couldn't believe it. I said, okay, they got this guy, Benjamin Rivera. And I think they got another guy. And then one guy said, well, look, I'm calling the cops because uh, I want no part of this. And, you know, uh, he did the right thing. He did the right thing to bring some closure to that case, at least to get her. And that story is still unfolding as well. So thank you for reminding me. I, I meant to put that up there as well. All right. I muted it for a minute because I was um, getting that ready. But no, yeah, my pleasure. Um, I'm glad we thought of him. Yeah, I mean, because someone mentioned it earlier too. But I, Sam Olson is definitely one of my babies. That that heifer needs to fry, fry, fry. Her and everybody else with her, Benjamin Rivera, Dylan Walker, and maybe maybe Dalton Olson. Maybe Daddy need to do a little time. He might not have to fry. I don't know mm -hmm. if he did it, did it, but... But he was negligent. Right. We really need that Amari's law. Seriously, that these people, you know, well, I, hey, I wasn't there. Okay, you, but you're the parent. You know what I mean? You got to have some responsibility. Just like uh, the baby that just that got shot by the officer. You can't just stand there and let your baby fight. And then she gets killed. And now y'all suing. I mean, you can sue. I get it. But, but you stood there. What's your price to pay? You know, right. you can't do that. Absolutely. So did you want to share, uh, I guess, yeah. our, our final clip or yes. final post? Yes. Let me, let me just tell you all real quick. I'm just going to yes. play the clip. The clip tells the baby Mackenzie's story um, in a nutshell. And it is a nutshell. There's more. Uh, she has a playlist on my channel. Mm -hmm. um, both of them, both channels. John, I, I did the backup channel thing for myself. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah. So, um, anyway, the, the video says it all. There's just not too much more I can say except that right now she is thriving. She is beautiful. She was on camera with us a couple of days ago laughing and giggling. Okay. Um, she's adorable and she's strong. When this happened to her, she was three months old. So just keep that in mind when you hear all the things 
that you hear. And if you don't like stories about child abuse, then now's the time to run. Mm. Now, is this a video piece you want me to, you're going to share with me and then I'm going to share it with the room or audio piece? It's a, it's a video because it does have a couple pictures in there of her, but I'm reading in the video. I'm reading, Oh, I guess more video. Yeah. So how do I do it? How do I give it to you? But we got them numbers going because we spread it the word. So let's do the same thing for this baby. Oh, you want to start at about a minute and 58 seconds. Okay, I gotta people. find out. Oh, you know, I am going to introduce you to how much you want to play. Hold on, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Let me see if I can do it this way. So I'm going to add it to the stream. Yeah, she's definitely a little fighter. Okay, so yeah. you have you have control of oh. moving. So yeah, we got the right screen, folks. <laughs> okay, okay. So I do I show it from my do I show my screen now or do you Yeah, no, no, no. It's a, you're on there now. You're on there okay. now. Okay, so got it. Okay. All you gotta do is hit the audio and, and let the uh let the video play. So let me go back. I, I, I actually did not understand what we were doing at all. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm coming back. Let me okay, there we go. So me oh but the video i gotta upload it again yeah it's gone right right here the third one yeah okay so but i still see your screen share so once you get it back up there mm -hmm. just do that and just make it real simple since my screen is up I'm just going to go to a minute and 58 to pass some things. Okay. Little Miss McKenzie. Can you hear it? A baby has been hurt. Can you hear it? Yeah, I'm beginning to get some I'm sound from it. In, in today, I'm nine months old. I'm going to mute. I was brutally attacked, abused, and neglected. No one heard my cries. No one cared about me in my screams or my silence as I lay there having seizures because of my injuries. I was three months old when I heard my skull crack in my head three times. I was three months old when my little brain swam in a pool of blood and I lost my eyesight. I didn't know or understand that my leg had been broken too. Still don't understand everything that happened to me, but here I am, I lived. And there is a reason I'm called here and was called here to stay. Today, I am nine months old and while I don't understand everything that is going on around me, I feel it. I sense it. I feel it all. I feel the love and the warmth that is starting to feel normal to me. But it still scares me. More to come, beautiful people. Right now, you know the only thing that matters. And that's justice for Kinsey. That's what we need. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that. My goodness. Mm. That was written by her grandmother, one of her grandmothers, and um, I, you know, it, I, I couldn't have said it any better, so I just read it. Beautiful. Yeah. I mean, to, to, to know that, uh, you know, baby Mackenzie is, is in need of help, and, you know, it, it, it's one after the other, and I'm just grateful that you brought that story now uh, 
and with all the other stories that we've covered here tonight, right. uh, you've brought that story uh, on my channel uh, to share and to, you know, create more and more awareness. Thank you so much for, for sharing that. A pleasure. Yeah, my pleasure. No, the world doesn't know about her and they need to and they're going to eventually. Definitely going to know about her if, if I have anything to do about it. I mean, look at her. She was three months old. Yeah. Beaten to within inches of her life. You, you had to be beaten to get three skull fractures, bruising to the kidneys, broken leg. It's ridiculous. Three months old, John? Seriously? Yeah, that's... Mm. There's no... Nothing. No justification whatsoever. And somebody's got to pay. Time. It, it it doesn't seem like wow. she's hurting all the time because she looked really happy last night. But there's certain things that trigger her and something about when you come near her head, trying to like squeeze a shirt over it or something like a regular, you know, squeeze your head in. She can't handle that and a few other things. Melissa, that's that is um, that's grandma. That's who wrote what I just read right there. The, what you just put on the screen, John Q. Oh. Melissa, this is John Q. Yeah, that's that's Mackenzie's other grandmother. There's two of them in here now. Oh wow, we got two of them. Okay, hello, yeah. Melissa. And then uh, justice for Mackenzie is her her other grandmother, Maria. Okay, Maria. I thought yeah. I saw that name in in the chat room as well. Yeah, justice. Yeah, they appreciate you so much. I can tell yes, you that. Indeed. Right now. Well, just thank you for for mm -hmm. the, the work that you do, uh, and you know, I knew tonight was going to be a very special live Yeah. Uh, that, you know, we were thinking about doing uh, for quite some time. I'm just so happy now that uh, we, we're actually doing the live yeah. and we're bringing awareness to all of these cases that mm -hmm. need justice. Um, and it's it's incredible, you know, that this this case, this last one you're showing us and sharing yeah. with us tonight, this is touching me. You can yeah. probably hear it in my voice. I can. I can. So, Justice for Mackenzie. She yeah, didn't do so. anything wrong. She'd only been here three months. She didn't do anything wrong to deserve this. Wow. And 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 again, John, seriously, we'll be talking more about it because yes. you know, the yes. family needs justice and, and they're a very smart family. So they're they're putting things together, but I think you can help. Yes, and if there's any if there's anything that I can do, uh, if uh, any one of the grandmothers uh, want to come up on the panel with uh, Miss Q on our next live, we can make arrangements to actually focus on this story uh, on my channel, and uh, we can do something special for this. That'd be contact her and uh, just to let her know that I applaud. Yeah. All of the work that uh, that she's put in on her channel to grow it to almost just practically with the speed of light. Yeah, uh, but then that. again, she burns the candle on both sides <laughs> of but the you candle. You know what? I didn't even. St I started doing <laughs> the lives after I hit a thousand because people were saying, "I can't wait till you go live," and I'm like, "Really?" Because my videos are pretty much live. I talk to the screen, but I was like, "Okay, why not?" So yeah. why not? And then it just took. You know, it's just one of those things. Once I'm in it, I'm in it. <laughs> yeah absolutely but i do appreciate you um whenever you're ready just like before you know you, your platform is much bigger than mine i'm sure you're much busier so just let me know and um me and uh, maria and melissa we got like a little group chat thing going almost actually we do i started one today and amanda who brought us all together um but We'll all coordinate, and that will be wonderful. Beautiful. Jump in there, absolutely. All we right, need so you. Let's uh, let's put it down for next Sunday at eight thirty New York time. I've got some time there, and we can absolutely do an exclusive live on this. Okay, grandmas, if you guys can't answer that right now, we can talk about it in phone calls, and just let me know. You said next Sunday, eight yeah, thirty we'll New do it York. Next Sunday. 8.30 New York, uh, 8.30 p.m. New York time. So same as tonight. Okay, yes, got it. same as tonight. And uh, if my schedule should change, I will let you know. But uh, right now I'm looking at a clear Sunday. 
I like to do yeah. lives on Sunday to start the week. Yeah. This is actually a good time. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. But for uh, for these, for they know. I told them. For them, it doesn't matter. Whatever works, I'm dropping everything. Now's the time. Right now. Got to put pressure. Um, yes, I've got that day and time. Melissa says yes. Mom, Maria. Thank you. Yes. Uh, but, okay, two yeses. We're good. Uh, I think this may be the last one uh, that I know that uh, you had brought up on your channel, Xavier mm -hmm. Harrelson. I got I that so. one from Molly and Perplex QT. They've been working really hard on this one, and and I just I just jumped in to help say his name. Yes, and so we're doing the same thing tonight on this exclusive live with Miss Q. We're bringing awareness to the Xavier. Harrelson case. Yes. It's an 11 year old that went missing. I forget uh, the actual location. I know I got oh, a video clip of it. He's uh, in, oh God, I was just Ohio, literally was just it making in? a video. No. Mm -mm. Iowa? Uh, where Molly Tibbetts was. Um, hold on. I, I'm literally working on his video. And oh, okay. I'm swimming in Xavier right now, but I can't think of that. Hold on. <laughs> but obviously for missing kids. Iowa. 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 Okay. I knew it was, uh, there was an I in there somewhere. So uh, I said uh, <laughs> Iowa, Ohio. Uh, okay. Yeah, they're right. next to each other anyway. <laughs> Thank you, Maggie. Actually, Maggie figured it out in chat. Oh, Thank you. good. Good. See, that's what teamwork does. Exactly. Teamwork makes the dream work. Yes. I love it. Yes. So they're looking for answers on this particular case. Yeah. And uh, you could be four years old and been and being taken from a crib, as we saw in the Cash Gurnan case, or you could be 11 years old. Yeah. And you could be missing and nobody knows where you are. The last thing they know, you were riding your bike. The next thing, you went missing. Exactly. Um, with us at the vigil last night. And this is what the only, Maria, Melissa, correct me if I'm wrong, that this is the only coverage that I've found. And which is not good, but it's good at the same time. But I hate when that happens because there should be more of the big boys in on this. Okay. I think I just got it. What did I do? <laughs> what did I give you, John? Uh-uh, that's the same one. Okay. That's the same one? Uh-huh. Okay. okay. I didn't do it right. Mackenzie. Yeah, let's stop that one. Okay. Okay, let me see. I, you know, I was talking, and I think I just, I don't know what I did. Give me a minute, okay? okay. <laughs> let me fix I, it. <laughs> I, think I, I think I see you. You can see my screen right now? Yeah, I can okay. see. Yeah, I'm going to add it to the screen now. Okay, let me go back one. And we want little Mackenzie. And it's storming out here in Nevada. Our monsoon season is really kicking in this year. But we need the rain. Now, why'd it go there? Hold on. Sorry, that's not what I clicked. I didn't. I clicked on this one. I don't know if I'm... Okay, good. It starts right with that. Okay. I don't know if I... Now, do you, do you want me to just play it from here? Yeah, you can play it right from where you are. I think uh, you'll have good sound, too. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah the mute button auntie jessica she's a sweetheart and right now she's the only one on um mom's side of the family that 
seems to give a fat rat about all this. Everybody you met tonight is from dad's side of the family, just so you know. We need the community to take interest in this baby to make sure that she doesn't fall through the cracks. Tonight, a family is speaking out after their eight-month-old niece almost died. They say she was beaten within inches of her life in late January, but no one has held, been held accountable. And 10 News reporter Grace King shares their ongoing fight for justice. And a warning, before we share this story, some of the pictures may not be appropriate for younger viewers. You know how sometimes you just meet somebody and you know that you're just going to love them? And that's exactly how I felt about Mackenzie. Jessica Atkinson was enamored with baby Mackenzie from the moment they first met. She was just really beautiful and sweet. Then she got a call that turned her world upside down. First responders had taken Mackenzie to East Tennessee Children's Hospital because of suspected child abuse. Mackenzie was nearly beaten to death. And to sit there and hold her and not know if this baby was going to live or die. I mean, it was the worst thing that's ever happened. It's a memory that keeps playing in her head. I just fell to pieces. Her little brain was so swollen. Her head was so big. Six months later, they're still discovering how extensive Mackenzie's injuries are. Will she walk? We don't know. Is her speech going to be impacted? We don't know. Is she going to have learning disabilities? We don't know. So many unknowns for this poor child. Madisonville police say it's an open case and one they're actively investigating. But so far, no one has been charged. There's a system designed to protect children. While those systems are in place, that does not mean that they're perfect. That's why Mackenzie's aunt and uncle are fighting for their niece. We're here for her. And we're going to do whatever we can to make her life the best it can be. And that we'll spend the rest of her life trying to make up for what happened to her. I'm Grace King reporting. The Department of Children's Services is also investigating that case. <sighs> so that was the only thing that I found. And, and I mean, it, it's enough. I just wish more of the outlets were, were sharing it and knew about it, but that's where we come in. That's the pressure I'm talking about right there. Right. Right. And this we can do because, uh, once, uh, once we're able to get, uh, next week's, uh, exclusive live, uh, coverage mm -hmm. on this case out, mm -hmm. then, uh, I will be able to put it on my community board. You'll be able to do the same on yours. Uh, anyone right. connected to Facebook, that uh, is going to share the live, it'll go to Facebook there. So little by little, we will start to get stronger on uh, the community awareness on YouTube. Right. And before you know it, uh, we're going to have other content creators uh, jump on board on top of this story too. The babies. That's the only time we really appreciate Rose, right? Because when we get them ourselves, it's like, ooh, I need to work out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but on the babies, it's so cute. <laughs> wow yeah when they're when they're that small you know e everything yeah. is everything is cute the the baby smell of the hair and the skin and oh my goodness you know it's like everything wow. yes. everything yes A newborn smell yellow and black and, and we have to show that we do because this baby's been through a lot look at that smile in her eyes and on her face yeah my goodness we got to make sure we put that that image out there too because she is fighting through i mean what she's been through come on yeah if somebody banged my head, if i had three skull fractures i don't think i'd be smiling like that i'd still be oh i think i'd be angry even at nine months but her joy is still there and that makes me feel really good really really good thing happening already to where it's kind of a little force you know, like today I got some information from um, Leave It to Bieber to put into my video that I'm making about Xavier Harrelson. Like, we're really working together out here. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, but and those content creators that feel the vibe, you know, like you and I had felt each yeah. other's vibes and mm -hmm. in case uh, content creating, mm -hmm. uh, you know, those are the ones that gravitate together, which will do good work. And then there are those content creators that would rather be in, you know, your competition and try to bash you, you know, to death. And I've seen that, uh, in the, uh, Orn and Orson West case and yeah. a number of different cases. Yeah, and that's sad true. to see that. That's a conversation right there. I can't. Yeah, they're going Understand. back and forth, but we can take a look and see what, what they say in it. Right. <laughs> I'll yeah. scroll back and see. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Let me see. Yes, it works. See, see, they got something going on, John. What they talking about? Yeah, let me come back to that one again. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what, Molly Golightly and Tiffany and AB get me rolling when they get... Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, Especially yeah. Tiffany. She's like an angry little snow white. It's like, mm, I'm so mad <laughs> right now. But, but, but you could tell she's pissed, but it's that same tone of voice that she always speaks in. So it's just so cute. Yeah. And uh, if you get wind of Molly, look out. You oh, know. Molly gonna let you have it. AB yeah. gonna let you, they all gonna let you have it just Absolutely. in their own different style. <laughs> you got to nip some stuff in the bud y'all. Yeah. You know, they come for you. Like what happened to me in my chat room the other night. That if I had been, ooh, we, y'all would have heard a different side of Q. I would have said, y'all would have said, I didn't know she even knew all those cuss words. <laughs> I I, I would have lost it for a hot minute on them. I mean, I, I, I like to think I would have kept my cool a little bit. I do. But what I want to do, you know. Mm hmm. Ooh. Or a certain thing has to be done. We will continue to shout on our platforms to get that message to them. Most of the time, the message is justice for, and you fill in the blanks. You fill in the name, because that's the reason why we're here. Is to make that contribution to seeing justice prevail for the little ones our young children, they are under attack. So it just gives me great ple uh, pleasure to know that uh, tonight is just a small contribution. Uh, and I thank uh, Ms. Q. Carlock for joining us and strengthening that contribution in the way that she's able to strengthen that contribution and together, coming together and sharing this message. Uh, well, you saw what we did tonight. And uh, we can't do it without you. We cannot do this without you. So much love goes out to you and yours. Hold them. Hold them closely. Always start the day as well as the moment with love. <laughs>